So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's guest Top Talk session. Uh, Fiona, are you with me? Hi, yes, I am. Excellent. Brilliant. Always that nervous moment where I've asked you to stay quiet. <laughs> you haven't run away. Really, really, really pleased to have you online with us tonight. So thank you so much for doing it after um, after Sam yes. having your, your first article for the magazine, which we, we loved here. Um, we thought it would be perfect to see if you were up for spending an, uh, an hour in uh, in our company anywhere, which was fantastic. So uh, um, before we get going, I suppose just for people who might not be familiar with it, a little bit of a background then, how you got into the, the wedding photography and, uh, and just uh, what we're going to look at tonight then, really. Um, so um, I was working in TV before, so I've always kind of been exposed to working with images and um, uh, really enjoyed um, that aspect of uh, my uh, last career. So when I got married and, and had kids, I didn't really want to go back into it. So a, a bit of a cliche, I'm afraid. But I went back to college and um, I started photography, which led um, to me setting up my own business seven years ago. Um, so it's been, it's been quite exciting over the last seven years, I have to say. <laughs> so that's how I got into it, really. I was very lucky when I was at college that um, the, uh, my lecturer there at the time, he was a wedding photographer, so I was able to shadow him. And I uh, built up a portfolio of work, which forced me to launch um, a website. And I went to a couple of wedding fairs. And it was, it was slow to begin with, but only to be expected. But you soon become, I guess, famous in the local area when you keep pushing yourself. So, yeah, that's how I got into it. Absolutely. So just to also, uh, a few people have asked already, and I was going to clarify it at this point, obviously, when we promoted the webinar, we promoted it as Fiona Elizabeth, which is obviously your business name. Um, so it's yeah. Fiona Elizabeth Photography, but of course, your surname, which I've shared now is Ing Larson. So, yeah. uh, but obviously, you want people to interact with you, and then obviously, they can go and check out your website. So that is Fiona Elizabeth Photography.com. And also yeah. uh, Fiona Elizabeth Photography on Facebook. So um, yeah, the story behind that, Jay, is just that, um, you know, Elizabeth was easier to um, spell, and uh, in Barcelona, I think people would get a little bit lost on the spelling, as in my maiden name, so which is Chermak. So that's how Fiona Elizabeth came about. Oh no, it makes total sense, and we have that all the time, even in our business mentoring when the company, when people are starting out, they're going, "What do we name our, our businesses?" And sometimes it is your surname, and sometimes and we've had the same problem just with the Photographer Academy. It's a long URL as well. Isn't it? of the day and um so it makes perfect sense so that's just cleared that up anyway anybody wants to interact and, and fiona does want you to interact with them so yes, that's that's brilliant uh, fiona what was interesting is that you and i were chatting yesterday uh, and it was actually quite uh, an apt conversation considering we were talking tonight about clients expectations and i was chatting to you about how i'm hoping well we are i'm getting married next year but how photography wasn't believe it or not that important to me, as I don't like having my picture taken as a photographer. Um, my partner yeah. Belle hates having a picture taken. Um, I would be more looking for a documentation of the day, um, whereas I know that family kind of expect, you know, a few classical portraits. But it was interesting that, you know, that sort of prompted our conversation about clients' expectations and how they change so much today, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And I think that the big the big thing is you have to listen to what your clients want. And um, if they're not 100% on photography, then it's for us to educate, really, and to encourage and make our clients feel relaxed in front of the camera. So they don't have to worry about it on their wedding day. They can actually enjoy it. But, um, you know, to create those classical portraits is important. And I think that even though you might not be so keen, I think after the wedding you may regret not having just a few nice portraits of you and your partner so it's it's about understanding what you want and educating in a really nice subtle way and um just delivering the goods really oh absolutely brilliant okay so right let's get ourselves uh rocking and rolling then if you're ready are you ready uh yeah i think so <laughs> okay so i'm gonna hand you the screen it's coming over to you now uh guys just remember please we do want you to interact with us so any questions you have for Fiona, please pop them through the question panel and I will share them where appropriate. So Fiona, you stop me whenever you want to, to check what the kind of questions we've got. Uh, and obviously um, I'll chip in if I need to, uh, but we have okay. it's all um, Thank you, thank you, Jay. And um, hello everybody. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me tonight. If you do have any questions, please do 
ask, I'm happy to stop at any point throughout the presentation. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll crack on. So managing client expectations. The, the big thing about photographing a wedding is to produce beautiful images for our clients, and that is our end game. And by managing our client expectations, this helps us to achieve great images and beautiful albums that we can be proud of giving to um, our clients. So how do we meet and manage these client expectations? So as I was just saying to Jay, a big part is actually listening to what our clients want. We advise, so we kind of educate, um, and then we deliver. So making the right impression from the start is so important. It's good to be really genuine and polite to show the enthusiasm and excitement. For all the weddings I've photographed, every, every time I get an inquiry through, that is a new client, that's a new experience for our clients. And it's important to really show that you're keen, that you're interested, um, you, know, you want to be excited for them. So you can build a connection with that client um, and that that will then lead on to trust and that's how that's how it all starts generally clients will know what they want from their photography because they would have scoured the internet and looked at all of us um, and, and they would have formed a load of questions and it's important that we listen to those questions um, so um, I want to get as much information from my clients as possible um, from the word go. I want to understand what their wedding's all about. I want to know what their expectations are. I want to know what they like and what they don't like. Um, so um, I can then think about how I'm going to manage their photography. How am I going to engage with my clients? How will I make them relaxed? How will I get them to enjoy their day? I find that a lot of um, people who come to me um, like Jay said, the first thing they say is, we don't like photography. Um, you know, we're very nervous in front of the camera. And it's it's a challenge to in, get those clients to start thinking about how they can enjoy their wedding day, not be nervous about the camera. So it's really important to me. So one of the ways I like to do that and to change the, um, the thought process of my client is to deliver a running order of how I would manage their wedding day. So I put together this itinerary um, and this shows my clients how I've managed their photography from the um, bridal preparations through to the first dance. Um, my clients love this. They get really excited about it. They can see that I'm organized. They can see that I care. They can see how their wedding day is actually going to be formulated. Um, and they genuinely, they genuinely quite, get quite excited. So I'm pleased to have this as part of my um, business model. Another part of my business is the pre-wedding shoot. So um, I like to take my clients out, meet at the venue, have a wander through, um, look for um, interesting areas where we can photograph against. But the big thing is just to sit with them for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, having a coffee, hearing about their um, day, what what plans they've um, achieved, what's left to do, take a look at the wedding dress. That's a big thing. I love having a look at the wedding dress. Um, that really helps to plan portrait shots leading up to the wedding. Um, yeah, so it's really important to me to have this as part of my um, package. Are there any questions, Joe? Or is it a bit early to ask? A, a bit early, but I tell you, uh, well, no, there's a few, but I, I, they're kind of the generic ones at the moment. Um, but somebody's asked, and I guess it's up to you really, but whether we could share that itinerary slide with them maybe across the Facebook page tomorrow. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. No. I'll, make, yeah. I'll make that happen tomorrow then. We'll just share that with everybody. Um, Would you like to go through it a little bit more? Uh, I think it might be a good idea. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting, actually. So, yeah, we can step back a bit okay. if you want to. No, slide so um, this is something that um, like I said before this really helps the client to understand what their wedding day is going to be about because having they, they haven't been married before so they've got um, no understanding really about what to expect um, so I start um, 
with the bridal preparations in the morning, talk to them about how I'm going to um, how I'm going to um, photograph the wedding dress, the flowers and the shoes, um, up until the point where um, she steps into her wedding dress. So before that, it's all very much documentary, photographing the hair and the makeup. And this is a really good time as well to um, uh, sort of relax into the day. Um, to get the bridesmaids on your side, to get the mum on your side, you know, it's all about building relationships all the time. So um, the rest of the day can um, just fall into place, really. I'll touch on that a bit later. So as you can see from this slide, this goes through um, the morning all the way to the groom's portraits at the church, the ceremony, um, and then leaving um, the church, going on to the drinks reception. So it really gives them an idea of how their day will flow. Um, there's uh, a bit about the group of photos that I will touch on again a little bit later, um, and also their portraits. And it goes all the way up until cutting into cake and the first dance. How does that sound? Yeah, no, that's perfect. And yeah, it's great. A uh, really good idea. Can I just ask, Anna, <laughs> I presume that the shambles is a venue and we're not referring to the second half of the wedding day. <laughs> Yes, it's definitely a bit, uh, venue, yes. It's a good name. <laughs> I just, he keeps giving out of me, but I just want to just, just, just want to check. <laughs> so probably check. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. That's a great insight, love. So you crack on, but there's there's plenty of questions, so don't worry about it too much. We've got plenty of time to answer the questions. You you, you carry on, though. So this is a big part to managing the client expectation, this area here, because this is sent out at the very beginning um, at the at very beginning, I have an inquiry. So um, I'll have an email which comes in and I'll pick the phone up and I'll talk to my client and I'll ask some questions about what they um, want from their wedding day, what time they're getting married, what time they're sitting down for their wedding breakfast. And so by gathering all of that information, I can then form this itinerary for them, which actually um, on the day, nothing runs smoothly really and you have to be flexible so it's just a guideline it's just something for them to um, show really for me to show how i would manage their photography so back to um the um the uh, pre the pre-wedding shoot which is something that i really love doing it's more for my benefit i have to say than it is for my clients but my clients absolutely love it and I would never change it. It's a really great way for meeting them again because it would have been a few months before, uh, well, it would have been a few months since the time that they booked to the, the time that their wedding uh, comes around, you know, maybe 12, 18 months. So to meet up with a couple again is really, really good. Um, it, it installs trust again and that connection comes, comes flooding back. And we can go through the itinerary that you saw before and we finalise all the timings. We talk about um, any changes that might have happened. And something which is really important to me is the group shots. I ask them what group shots they want. I advise on how many I think that they should have. Um, we discuss when to when to do the group shots because this is part of the wedding day that nobody really likes. From experience, I've heard many stories um, from photographers and from and from couples in this area is uh, not fun <laughs> it's not a fun aspect of the day but by managing it it can be okay and it can be fun so it's it's not to um it's not to be um looked at as a, a daunting aspect of the day so once we finalized all the timings and we've discussed um uh you know the group shots and their portrait shots um etc we then walk through the wedding venue scouting out locations so um venues are you know they can be a modern a modern uh, golf club or they could be a beautiful stately home to a castle up in the highlands um, so there are plenty of opportunities in all of these locations to be able to create stunning photography um, we're not to be put off by the fact that it's not a castle in the highlands but it's just a, a regular golf club down the road it doesn't matter there are plenty of aspects to all of these buildings that we can use to create really good photography and that's really fun that's really fun to do with clients to wander through 
pick areas where they really um, are really interesting, um, where we know that they're going to, as a couple, when they've got their uh, wedding gear on, they're going to really pop out of the shot. Um, that's really, it's really important and it's good fun as well to do because whilst we're walk, walking around, you know, I get to um, take photographs of them. So I get them to um, pose and stand and we talk about what's important, feet and hands. And then we have a little bit of fun putting some movement in and it just helps them really relax with me and in front of the camera. So on their wedding day, they know what to expect. And that's the thing. It's about meeting those client expectations. It's about forming a connection. It's about trust and it's about having fun. I think that's that's key as well. Um, let's have a look. So when we're walking through um, the venue, I like to make suggestions. I like to give a little bit of advice on what we can do and what we can achieve, like where we can hang the um, wedding dress. So this shot was taken in Switzerland. Um, the hotel room inside they, there was no picture rail, there were some nice doors, but it was really busy. There were lots of bridesmaids in there. It was really crowded. And I just wanted to find a really nice place which summed up the location as much as the dress. So um, this was what we found and this is what I suggested and they absolutely loved it. So it's really important to do this. So going back to um, walking around the venue and everything and discussing group shots, this is a big part, again, to how I like to manage my uh, client expectations. As I said before, over the years I've been photographing weddings, I've heard that generally no one likes this part of the day. But by managing these group shots, we can firmly meet our client expectations. And they can have fun. And they can be done and dusted and out of the way and everybody's happy. So... The way I managed the group shots, I actually photographed these first before the portrait shots. So when the bride and groom have either arrived at their wedding reception or they've just come out from their ceremony, I will give them about 15 minutes to meet and greet guests either way, whether they've just arrived or they've just had their ceremony. So they can have a glass of champagne, they can have a quick bite to eat, they can you know, just try and slow the day down a little bit. Um, so because I get this done first, I photograph the whole wedding party first. And then I'm armed with a list of names and group shots that we've previously discussed during that pre-shoot. And I've only said, well, I've suggested eight to ten family group shots to keep things simple. So I photograph the whole wedding party first. Then if they wish, they can have hens and stags because that's normally their key, their key friends from work, university, college. And once those big group shots are done, then I take the, the immediate family only and we walk to an area that we have decided to photograph the family group shots. This would have been decided during the pre-shoot. So on the day, the bride and groom know what to expect from me. I know what to expect from them and this is going to and this will happen really simply without any stress just with ease and everyone can bring the champagne along the events organizers know where we're going to be so they can bring canapes over so it's just to be made part of the day it's made, made it's made to be fun as well as to actually just get them out of the way so that's really important and um, I would really advise if you're starting out and you're not really sure uh, about this part of the wedding day, then this formula will really help you. How am I doing, Jay? <laughs> you're doing absolutely great, love. We've got a couple of questions, actually, so I was going to jump in if you were uh, about the, specifically about the groups and things. I thought this was quite a nice question because actually and I'm sat here looking at it. Um, and you don't often see, I, I don't think I've ever seen chairs in the group shots before, but I really like it. So is that something oh. that, that you, you've done before? And obviously, would you plan for that? Or? Um, I think I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't plan for, for it, especially. But if I see that it's there on, on the day, then, um, yeah, I, I would use them. I, I think it brings something interesting to the shot. Um, 
sometimes I plan these shots prior to the wedding day, so I'll have an idea of how many bridesmaids, how many groomsmen there are going to be, and I'll try and um, sort of create uh, a shot in my mind before the wedding day. So um, for this particular shot, um, it was taken a few years ago, actually. Um, I probably would have said, let's put some chairs in. But as it happens, they were in a marquee. Um, this was taken in the bride and grooms, uh, the brides, actually, the bride's parents' back garden, can you believe it? And they had a wonderful marquee. So it was really easy for us just to grab a couple of chairs and bring it into uh, the composition. So I can't remember whether it was pre-planned or not, but it worked. No, it does work. I really like it. Yes, yeah, it's different as well. Um, it, it also prompted. Well, this com this this section prompted a question. Are you talking about the stags and the hens? Would you typically oh, yeah. find that the stags and the hens shots are a little bit more informal and a little bit, a little bit more fun usually as well? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. But this is very. This is this is this shot that you're seeing now is very structured. But so the whole wedding party for the hens and stags. Yeah, they're just they're just good fun. Absolutely. I mean, we use, when we do them, we usually have a lot of fun with the. the it's usually yeah. something that's asked for as well, you know, with, with, with the couples as well. Depending, obviously, the couple, but uh, usually the, the hen and the stag images can be, you know, can be absolutely great fun and usually great big portraits as well. Sometimes as well, which is always a bonus. Um, so we've asked for a couple of tips, top tips from when shooting certain things. Uh, obviously. Uh -huh. From, from your point of view, um, what kind of shots would you, uh, would you would you normally maybe look at if you've only got one bridesmaid and one groomsman? Yeah, putting you on the spot there. Ooh, interesting. Well, do you know what? I think it depends. It depends on what the background is. I think really to what you can create. I mean, um, you'd probably. It really depends on the location for that because you could. You know, say for example, you were you were on the side of a building and it was really plain, um, but there were a couple of recesses. Perhaps you could use those um, in a fun way to create some interesting composition, or just keep it simple and um, and just have them just have them nicely posed, you know. I think that's important. Concentrate on the feet and the hands, the flowers, make sure that they're sat nicely. Um, for the grooms uh, men and the best man, just make sure that they're looking really smart. And yeah, it's a tricky one, that. I'm totally put on the spot. <laughs> well, you are. But what's interesting is uh, Jess, who's asked the question, and said, well, the, step the stepdaughter's the bridesmaid and a friend is the best man. But now she's just uh, also mentioned that the location is a castle with a garden and a Chinese garden bridge. So... Uh, I think you have uh, 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 good locations, right? Well, mm -hmm. um, I love the uh, your, your first answer though about um, uh, composition and finding something a little bit quirky and different. I really like. I think that's really. Uh, I see a lot of photographers. I've seen it in your work as well, Fiona. A lot of people looking at these things. It's about homework, isn't it? Go and check out your venues. You mentioned that earlier. Um, yeah. And. Uh, you know, something different always works for me. I mean, like, you know, we were talking about my wedding photography. I would definitely be looking for something different. Uh, so I love yeah. that. But, uh, you know, I did put you on the spot, but the recesses. No, that's fine. And I think with creating something different is that um, you can always, you can always tick the box with a regular shot, nicely composed. You know, everyone's looking pretty formal pretty nice you know it will it will do the job but it's really nice as well to create something which is a little bit more out of the box um, and a little bit different because then the client has two shots that they can choose from I shot um, a group shot a couple of years ago um, this was up in Surrey somewhere Banham Hall I think it was if I remember rightly and they had these massive giant mushrooms in the grounds and the bride and groom wanted to have a group shot incorporating these massive mushrooms which were quite frankly the ugliest things i've ever seen in my life but nevertheless we went and we photographed around them and it was a really good fun very very quirky um shot they were a very quirky couple and they wanted to bring that into their group shot so we did a nice formal lineup something very classical to something very out there and it works and it's what people want and you just do what people want. It's their wedding day. And, um, you know, why why should we object? Oh, brilliant. They love 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, oh, this is okay. So I, I was kind of expecting this because we were talking about groups. Uh, top tips on positioning larger groups. Do you have a formula? Do you have a format? This is a pretty large group that um, we are looking at now, the, the um, bridesmaids and groom shot. And I think that um, it, 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 it does warrant a little bit of thought to um, break it up a little bit. Um, Ideally, what you want is to be able to go through a large group shot and to have um, sort of portraits of each individual. So you could almost isolate um, the groups into individual portraits. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. So you could do that. Um, you know, sometimes um, when it's a large family group shot with aunts and cousins, they don't necessarily want it there isn't a lot of time. So you don't want to actually waste the, the, the time that you have. You want to find a nice background where you can photograph regular group shots where everyone's going to be happy. But if you spend too much time working on each group shot, then you're going to eat into the bride and groom's time. And that is actually what you definitely don't want to do. Uh, brilliant. That leads us on to one of our next questions, actually, about Brian. Actually, oh, no, I'm going to jump one back. Sorry, I missed one. Um, I thought this, yeah, this comes up quite a lot, actually, so good one. Um, I thought it was actually – the I misread the question at first. I thought the first question was, how do you deal with uh, Uncle Bob, the photographer, getting in your way? That's how I read it at first, which I was – oh, right. a lot on the wedding conversations, but it isn't. So ignore what I've just said completely. That's how well, I can answer it if you wish. Well, you know what? It's a good question, isn't it? Because we get it's all the time now. Everybody's a photographer, aren't they? Everybody's a photographer with a camera. Um, yeah. And, uh, so go on then. Yeah, I, I, I'll ask you that question anyway. <laughs> so um, I don't mind Uncle Bob, quite frankly. You know, he's he's fine. But when he's chipping, when he's um, on the back of my shoulder and he's photographing over me to try and get that shot, then I simply just ask the group shot to look at my camera only and wait and then once my shot's taken then i just step aside and let uncle bob take it perfect you know the the, the 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 problem is okay so it means that he's got that shot and he can distribute that shot to everybody in that group if they wanted to which means that potentially you could lose out on print sales with that group shot but i don't want to be making a fuss i don't want to say to uncle bob look do you mind that's my shot, you can't take it, because that then creates an atmosphere, sure. you know, yeah. people, you just need to let it go, there'll be somebody else, there'll be, you know, Aunt Maud with her other camera photographing over my other shoulder, um, you know, and you just can't, you just can't tell people not to take photographs, it's, you just can't do it anymore, just got to flow, just got to go with flow. Well, Uncle Bob has now stopped taking pictures over your shoulder and is in uh, the shot as Uncle Bob, but he has his uh, reactor light mafia sunglasses on. How do you how do you get over that one? Which is the actual question that came through the question panel. Okay, well, you know, if it's a really if it's a really sunny day, then all the other aunts and uncles will probably have their sunglasses on as well. So it's nice to take them off so you can actually see their faces but um you know what you have to position that group shot so it's not you don't have the sun glaring into their faces you need to turn them around and you need to backlight them or you take them into the shadow so you know um they're not blinded by light maybe bounce a little bit of light in using a couple of reflectors just to highlight their faces but I don't think there's any harm, uh, and I think I don't think it's rude if you just ask them politely, isn't it? Just so we can see your face and for the photograph. Yeah, just, you know, a bit of banter with these group shots goes a long way. You know, you, you're, you're standing there in front of all these people. It's almost like you're on stage. It can be quite intimidating. But at the same time, you know, just have a bit of fun. Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, this was quite an apt question, uh, and then I'll save a few of the other ones because they're a bit more generic. But um, we meant we talked about this yesterday, actually. Um, on the day, the couple uh, turn out the bride and groom don't seem as interested anymore in the bride and groom portraits. Any tips yeah. on getting them back on track? This is a hard one. 
because generally the bride will be up for it but the groom won't just, the bride will always be up for it she's just spent loads of money on a beautiful dress you know she's had hair and makeup done she will want to be there um, to the bitter end having her photograph taken but the groom just gets a little bit impatient um, um, so I would break it up a little bit so the groom wants to be with his mates, he wants to be drinking his beer and, you know, having a laugh. And so try and just break it up a little bit. Always speak to them, always communicate, always make sure that they're happy at any point that they want to just have a break from the photos. You know, I'm only with them for 30 minutes, but if they wanted to um, break it up, that's it's, it's no drama. I would rather he was happy in the shop than he looked miserable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to totally. Um, this is quite interesting. And again, it's all about top tips, which we kind of expected. Um, you know, uh, do you ever experience maybe tensions, tensions, family tensions, I'm guessing is the question more within the group shots and any ways to sort of combat that? Um, all the time, really. Um, a lot, of, you know, a lot of the time there are family tensions and you need to be sensitive to it. And that's when it's important to have your list and, and discuss these group shots with your um, couples before the wedding starts. You need to be prepared. You need to understand that um, parents possibly can't be in the same group shot. And, you know, you need to know how to manage that. That is really important. And that's when you have names. And so rather than calling out both sets of parents or bride parents, groom parents, you call out people's names. Yeah. And they can join the group shot. And that's a much nicer way of um, keeping tensions at uh, the minimum. Absolutely, I get that, brilliant. Uh, how do you go about, uh, we'll do that now. Um, oh, the 30 minutes that you referred to then, was that the bride and groom photography time allocation? Yeah, yeah I thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah it, it doesn't tend to be dead on 30 minutes because it just depends again on the day, you need to be flexible and you need to read your you know, like the guy or the question that came in about, um, you know, they might not be that keen. You need to read the situation and you need to be able to um, be flexible and work with them to get the best results, meeting client expectation. Uh, typically, would it be one session on the day for bride and groom photography? Um, it depends, really. Um, it depends on them. It depends on the light. Um, this time of year, I would definitely encourage them to um, do two um, uh, two sort of setups. So one during the drinks hour, um, and then out again in the evening. And the sun is what it is now. Just really, you know, nice, warm, golden light. Perfect. Brilliant. Uh, sorry, no, I think I, I think I've managed to confuse a, a couple of the audience. So the thirty minutes we're just referring to. Uh, the bride and groom um, portraits, nothing to do with the group shots that we were talking about just now. Oh, no, 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 no. Group shots, we wrap them up in about 20 minutes. Excellent. Oh, even faster. Well, actually, that was one of the ones. Like, I, I like your style. That's nice. 30 minutes. 20 minutes, group shots, done, out the way. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Fiona, I'm going to let you crack on, and I'm just going to sift through these. I think we've answered quite a few of them now, and I'll get them ready for the next section of questions for you. Okay, lovely. So, um, yeah, okay, I'll... I'll, I'll... Oh, sorry. Oh, hello. Sorry, love. I muted you instead of me. I do apologise. Oh. <laughs> We've got you back now. Got us back. Excellent. So just going back a little bit to that all-important pre-shoot where we've finalised timings and we've talked about locations um, where we're going to shoot and talked about the group shots. Um, this now lets our clients um, understand that we have the best interest at heart for them to achieve the best possible results. And we have them on our side now. We have strong connections. We have trust. And for this, this is so important to me because this gives me the freedom to create beautiful photography because they trust me and they know that I'm going to be able to deliver. So bride and groom are on our side. So we're all set to have a great day. Feelings and emotions run high on every wedding, especially in the morning, just as we're starting work. How we behave during this time will set the tone for the rest of the day. 
not only do we have expectations of the bride and groom to meet, but now we have the immediate wedding party too. And this is really tricky because um, it, there are so many things happening. It's a very busy part of the day. Um, you've got lots of people in a very short, in a very small space. Um, bridesmaids you would never have met before. You have to win them over pretty quickly. Mum, she's all right. You've met her before probably, um, but you'll be really worried. Um, anticipations will be running pretty high. So how we behave is really important. So with this in mind, we need to be thoughtful of our presence and mindful of what is occurring in front of us. And again, be flexible. We don't want to be bolshy. We don't want to be controlling. We don't want to say, come and stand over here or makeup artist, would you mind moving into a better light? There is a time when we can step up and we can take control of a situation, but we don't want to control the actual action that's happening in front of us. So it's very important. This will maintain trust throughout the day. So by the time we get round to photographing our clients' portraits, our couples will be ready to work with us, creating amazing images. And to me, this is really important. This is where I want to add value to my, to my clients and their wedding albums. So managing our client expectations um, from the time that they get in touch with us by listening and um, advising and um, showing that we care creates that trust and that enables us to deliver some really good and really strong photography. Um, so that is it. Any more questions? I'm happy to go back on the slides as well. I've sort of raced through it a little bit, Jay. Oh, we have plenty of questions, so don't don't you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> They've come in <laughs> thick and fast, so uh, low and loads them. So Tim, so we'll, we'll we'll leave the screen with you in case you do want to jump back and forth uh, to to refer to any of the images. Um, they're not uh -huh. going to be in any particular order, I'm afraid, Fiona. It's going to be just as easy for me to work down them, to be honest. So I'm yeah, no worries. That's them all uh, for you. Um, so I thought this was really nice, actually. I've got my first pre-wedding shoot myself on Sunday. Uh, top tips and the images I should definitely be looking to get. Well, my top tip is to form a strong connection with your, with your clients, really. Um, and, it, and, and it's to get them to relax in front of the, the camera. So I would have a look through some... Um, I don't know, some books to, to sort of familiarise yourself with um, quite relaxed portraiture um, of couples being together and how they stand and how they hold themselves. Um, and I wouldn't spend, I would maybe shoot about five setups and walk around, have those five setups in mind, walk around the wedding venue, um, look for some nice interesting locations um, and, then, and then fire off and see what you, see what you get. Uh, I thought that was interesting as well, actually. So typically, normally, when you do your pre-wedding shoots, would it always be at the wedding venue normally? Well, um, it depends, actually, because the, the shot that I showed you before was actually done in my local town because the couple um, were living in Singapore at the time. We didn't have an opportunity to um, meet at the venue. So I went to the venue by myself to do a recce, so I could familiarise myself with the, the venue and where I wanted to work. Um, and then I met them at my studio and we had a coffee and a chat and then we went out and we shot on the on the high street there. I thought, and I thought it was, sorry, I thought it was a great idea because obviously when we, you know, we, we do as part of our packages, the pre-wedding shoots, but we'll tend to go wherever the couple want. But I thought, but we'll go and visit the venue if we're not familiar with it like you do. Um, before, yeah. before a wedding day but I thought it was actually a nice way to do two birds one stone especially if you don't have the time um, mm -hmm. so yeah I thought it was a great idea so it's just interesting to see if that was was the norm for you that was good. yeah um, it just it, yeah it depends normally I definitely go to the venue but otherwise uh, for example um, actually this image that you're looking at now um, Brooke this was up in Fask in Scotland um, and they lived in London so we met in London and we um, 
you know, again, met up, had a coffee, finalised a few things, and then we, we went for a stroll in the local parks. And it's just... It's just about getting them to feel comfortable with you and the camera. Don't forget, no one likes having their photograph taken. So we have to get these people to, <laughs> to love it. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, oh, it was interesting. This came in uh, when we were talking about, uh, when you were talking through your, your, your sort of day planner, your schedule. Um, yeah. Do you find that the running order of the day sometimes, how, how, how does it vary? if the venue for the wedding is the same as the wedding breakfast, so I guess, you know, where people are actually staying at the venue as well, does it change much? Are you still allocating the same sort of time with the bride and bride and then onto the groom? And Yeah, you are really, you're allocating the same amount of time. It is easier because obviously you're not traveling between venues. Um, so it kind of buys you a little bit more time sometimes during the drinks reception, which is nice for the bride and groom because they they don't want to be with you for 30 minutes max. I mean, 20 minutes is brilliant. I think after 20 minutes, I think you start losing the groom. So um, you, you, you want to get them back to be with the guests and spend as much time with their friends as possible. And I think having everything under one roof um, really does help that. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um... I, I, this was I kept this because I thought well I, I've not come across the kind of question before but maybe I'm just misreading it wrong um, do you get many weddings where they aren't confirmed until the day whether it's going to be inside or outside um, yes I mean some locations will have an area outside some venues have an area outside where um, you know on glorious summer's day they'll, they'll be wanting to get married out you know underneath the pergola somewhere but um, if it's pouring with rain and we won't know until the morning then you know they have to that's really for the venue the venue will set up uh, and bring the wedding indoors sure but it doesn't change anything so what i actually i kept this one as well because it was right oh, i was almost right next to it so uh, any go-to or your sort of preferred backups if the weather turns on you what, what's what's the go-to sort of key things you look for if the things aren't going to plan um well, you, you, if, you end, if you end up photographing your group shots and portraits indoors, that's really the, the key, isn't it? That's the answer. You're not outside anymore. You're, um, you're indoors. And um, the rules apply. You know, you're looking for a nice room with a nice background. Um, you're looking for some nice window lights to be able to light the, the room. I tend to turn all the lights off so I can just see the natural light rather than having it um, sort of polluted by... Um, tungsten lights and stuff because that can be quite confusing well I find it quite confusing anyway I like to see the natural light coming through but yeah it, the principle is all the same Absolutely. all the same I'm with you uh, and unfortunately it's one of those things isn't it if, if it does turn on us and it happens to us all um, yeah. we've got to make the most of it and obviously if you've done your homework and you've found that you know you've got a, a, a good location there'll always be areas uh, interesting areas inside sometimes you've got no choice and you've just got to find the biggest areas for your groups um, but uh, you know you hard but it's um you know i guess not every wedding is going to go the way you want it to be and um you just have to, that's why it's important to be flexible and just take it on the chin yeah. don't get wound up don't get stressed about it you know because that will come through and people will be able to see it and um you know they'll start to think oh i don't know she maybe she's not um the photographer we thought she was and you're losing that um expectation and you're losing that trust then uh, so this sort of um and i've just jumped a few uh, we will go back to the ones that so that, that i have that i've jumped across because uh, talking about we, we haven't really talked about um uh, lighting at all i know it's more about expectations so do you use any lighting on the day what what do you have in the bag if you need it um i take reflectors with me um so i use that actually to illuminate my uh cut my brides and grooms but generally I'm, I'm always using natural light always um so whether that's backlighting them um you know mid-afternoon or finding a bit of shade and then bouncing some light back in with the reflector um i'm always looking for um nice areas where they're going to be um complementing skin tones and the shadows brilliant absolutely brilliant um, 
somebody's obviously gone and checked out your website already, uh, Fiona, and noticed on your, I thought it was a really interesting question actually, and it, and it, it does come up a few times. So on your about page, that obviously you, that uh, you're using a Nikon, but you use it with a grip attached. Um, do you find um, with zoom lenses, do you prefer, sorry, is the question, zoom lenses or primes, as sometimes the camera can start to get quite heavy with a 700, uh, 70 to 200 on it? Uh, well, that is an interesting um, question because actually I don't have many primes. I'm normally shooting on Zoom anyway, um, 24 to 70, uh, 70 to 200 because they give me the most flexibility. Brilliant. So top tips then on, comp uh, on, on dealing with the weight, anything that you use or do you just got used to it? Yeah. I just got used to it. It's, it amazes me, Mark. Or, yeah, it's heavy, but you just, you know... Um, you know, I, I don't know, Mark technology in its ways, I don't Mark, think. Mark yeah. jokes with me here, because Mark will shoot quite a lot with the 70s to 200, um, handheld, and he can actually handheld uh, with one hand and, and still get an incredible uh, image out of it, but I can't. Uh, and we're both no. similar in size and shape, and um, and uh, I, I just can't, but he's been doing it a lot longer than I have, and, and uh, yeah. but, but he admits now, even now, he might not have, I'm not sure if he's, think, but he might, he, he would tell you that he's, he's better right now, but I think it's getting a little bit harder for him as he gets older. So. Well, I think a top tip would be, would, would, would be to um, rank up your ISO, um, so your shutter speed becomes faster. Um, I normally shoot wide open anyway, so um, I have to be kind of quite careful. Um, so, but actually, do you know what? I tend to underexpose quite a bit as well. So you just have to read the light situation, try and work out, you know, maybe on 7200, my shutter speed um, might be, you know, 250th of a second, something like that. You know, so I have to kind of like balance it all out, really. It's about understanding your kit and understanding what you can achieve. I think with cameras today, obviously I can't speak for the old ones, but the ISOs are so good now, aren't they? And, mm. and the quality, you know, you're not getting the old, you know, not getting anywhere near as much. Well, some of it, you don't see any grain even at the high ISO, high ISO, ISOs now. So, uh, yeah. and, you know, and it's not particularly it's expensive anymore. No, software is very good at getting rid of some of the noise as well. I like the noise though. Noise no, is no problem. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a desired thing, isn't it? You either like it or you don't, I think. But uh, yeah. Um, but uh, I think the cameras are so good today. Right, I lost my track a bit there. Uh, I'm just going to touch on this again because I think we've covered it. So uh, somebody asked about timing. So we talked about th about 30 minutes for the bride and groom. You said about yeah. 20 to 30 minutes for your group shots, depending on how many they are. Of course, every so everything is everything kind of around that 30, 20 to 30 minutes. You know, with the setups. You know, in, in your planning, in your schedule. Is that what you're sort of looking at? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and it's all about, you know, ultimately, you know, I'm, I've kind of, maybe I've lost track a little bit with this presentation and it seems to be a little bit more about how I work rather than, um, you know, managing that client expectation. But they, they uh, it's all about, you know, find, it's all about generating trust and keeping that rapport that you've built at the very beginning when they first make that inquiry. You have to keep that going throughout the wedding day. You've got to keep working at it keep remaining positive and you know because ultimately you want them to absolutely be able to relax with you have fun with you trust you understand you so they can take direction and create beautiful photographs absolutely brilliant um how close to the actual wedding do you normally do the pre-wedding shoot or how far um, about four weeks yeah four weeks before so everything's really fresh and you've got some time as well leading up to the wedding to sort of ping a few um, ideas backwards and forwards so you're keeping up that rapport and they follow you on Facebook these days as well don't they so it's kind of nice you've got that relationship with them from the very beginning to to the very end Brilliant. I tell you what, what else is really important actually Jay and what I haven't touched on is um, the, the expectation, the client expectation doesn't just end at the end of the wedding day. You know, when they come back off their honeymoon, they're excited. They want to see these beautiful photographs that you've created. And it's about um, being able to present them to them in a really nice way, put them in a really nice album. If you are selling albums, um, if it's just digital packages, then, you know, nice branded USB key. That expectation to 
um, deliver has to go right to the very end as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant top tip. No, we haven't touched on that. It's great. I love that. Um, uh, do you know what? There's some really interesting questions here, and it is more about sort of the whole wedding process. We've obviously got quite a few people who are at the beginning of their wedding journeys as photographers, which is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so I thought this was, I, I wanted this on purpose, so because we get this a lot, and we get asked this a lot. Um, so typically, uh, what, what do you wear as the photographer on your wedding day? Oh, right. Okay. Well, I always dress smartly. Um, it's unfortunately it's always black but then I don't you know I'm, I'm I know that I don't want to be looking like a guest and um, wearing some beautiful floral outfit but at the same time I want to be looking sophisticated um, elegant so I can fit in with um, my surroundings yeah absolutely I mean it was weird when we first and we still obviously we're still doing them uh, weddings, but when I first started working with Mark a long time ago now, uh, sometimes Mark would be actually in the full, um, you know, uh, tail suit and everything like that. But but, but a long time ago, uh, but yeah. but now we favour uh, the black trousers, um, and uh, we have a very either subtle um, uh, company polo shirt, or uh, we actually for the weddings now we actually have a company shirt, but it's embroidered, yeah. uh, but we're blacks. Uh, because we're big and we're sweaty guys, that black seems to hide uh, a lot of our imperfections. But, uh, but, but, it, yeah. <laughs> but it's smart, isn't it? It's smart. And it's also then, it, you're remembered, and it's the message that comes across, isn't it? So, well, that's right. You know, you're, you're about providing a really good service. You're about providing, uh, and, and not just providing, but underpinning you as an individual and a brand. And so all of this is really important. You know, how you look, how you behave, um, how you interact with the wedding guests that we haven't really touched on either, but um, it's all about providing uh, a top service that your clients are going to absolutely love and then recommend you to other people. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Uh, top tips for building rapport quickly on a wedding day? Well, um, being polite, having fun, paying some interest, you know, if uh, someone wants to stop and have a chat for, with you for five, ten minutes, then take the time, well, it's not going to be five, ten minutes, but, you know, take the time to um, show a bit of interest. You can always say, well, I need to, you know, go off and crack on and take some shots. You know, you just got to be polite. It's all about self-image. Brilliant. Uh, I think I missed one there. Um... Do you ever find um, with, I think we've kind of answered it, but we'll, we'll touch on it again quickly, uh, find with couples that might be on their second or third wedding even who have lost mm. that little bit of excitement about the whole thing. Um, is that, again, just building up that excitement like you've already talked about tonight, you know, uh, in advance, do you think? Okay, so I think anyone who's getting married, whether it's a second or third time, they are excited about it you know, the bride especially, they might not want to have, um, they might not want to have the big wedding dress, they might not want to have um, so many um, family group shots, but, you know, they, they are getting married, they're getting married for a reason, it's because they, they want to be together, so it's, it's, it's really exciting. No, for sure, yeah. Uh, but I think you'd I think you'd covered it. It's just building up their excitement again in the pre chats and everything like that, and um, and hopefully you know they've booked you for a reason as well and your photography, so it should be an element that they want, isn't it? Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I don't. You know, if they don't if they don't want um, if they don't want if they don't want it, they'll go to Gretna Green and they'll be um, they'll have a nice quiet wedding up there and they'll be done with it and life will go on. But um, Otherwise, they'll be embracing embracing it for a third time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm not doing it. I'm doing one. Third time off. <laughs> <laughs> Once and that's it next year. No more. That's it. Oh. <laughs> um, this came on quite early, so I'm not sure if it was something you were talking about because it's a bit abbreviated. Hands okay. and feet mentioned frequently top tips. Um, hands and feet. So... When you're posing um, anybody, to make them feel really comfortable um, and to get the best pose is to, to start with the feet and work your way up. So whether it's a, a groom or a bride or whether it's just some um, you know, regular 
portrait during um, the pre-shoot, um, then we want to get the, their feet and hands feeling comfortable because then they, as, as individuals, will feel comfortable as well. People always get confused. They don't know what to do. They're standing there and they're just they're wanting direction. And it might just be as simple as saying, look, just uh, cross your feet, cross your ankles, um, rest your wrists um, on your thigh or um, put your hand on your hip or, you know, it just and subtly move, seeing how they stand in those little positions and then adjusting them slightly to, um, you know, get a really good shape for them and make sure they look comfortable and happy. Brilliant. Do you use assistance at all, Fiona? We haven't mentioned on that. Um, I have done in the past. Um, I would like to find a really good assistant. Um, I do kind of um, recruit, if you like. I look at people could come in, um, they get in touch with me and I meet them. And it's hard to find somebody that you can really rely on and trust. So generally I work on my own. Well, Bruce has asked if you take on apprentices. So I guess your question is, ah. you? so there you go. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Let me have a look at your work and take it from there. Absolutely. Um, so to reiterate, because I know we've kind of mentioned it, and I think these questions came in before you actually mentioned it. Um, so all natural light, love, yeah, all available light. Yes. Yeah. I do get all available light. I mean, in the winter, um, it's unavoidable to put the flash gun on. Um, you know, during speeches, it might be four or five o'clock, it's going to be dark. But you have to balance out that flash with the ambient light. So um, you're, so it's, it makes for a really nice shot, and not completely stark and blown out. Uh, That's a whole different ball game, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, this was quite nice. Questions about shooting the ceremony. Uh, do you have a pre preferred place to stand? Or do you try and get as close to the couple as possible? Oh, no, I don't try to get in close to the couple. No, I prefer to be right out of the way. That's what a zoom lens is for. It's, there was a, a series of questions, about, I think, about the same thing, because the, the, they followed up with, my couple has confirmed that they don't mind where I stand, and they wouldn't mind me being closer, so there's plenty of expressions captured. Still, okay, well, the first thing I would definitely recommend is that you have a chat with the vicar or the priest because they will they will tell you where to stand. And sometimes they um, will have quite a lot of restrictions in the church and you have to really respect those because it's happened to me in the past. But I was out of the way, I was squatting down, I was photographed, I was pretty far away, I had my zoom lens on. But the um, priest stopped the service and told me to go to the back of the church. And that was really embarrassing. So, um, you know, I would definitely have a word and um, respect that. But, you know, that was a long time ago when I was first starting out. So you can imagine how mortified I was. But, um, you know, now I kind of understand the rules really in the church. And as long as you're quiet, you can move around quite happily. And by just saying to the vicar, you know, or priest, you know, during during the, the hymns, I'd like to go around to the back of the shop, uh, back of the church, take a shot. You can then go around and photograph the groom's expression, go back around and photograph the bride's expression. Um, you know, I wouldn't get to, I wouldn't become part of the action in the church at all. But that's just me, you know, each to their own. Brilliant. Uh... Okay, just jumping. I was just I was, I was scanning through to see what we've answered and what we haven't, but we've still got a few to go, so you're, you're happy to stay with us, I'm sure. Just checking. Yeah, cool. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, okay, this was interesting. Um, how do you manage the bride's expectations who are very different from the images on your slides that you may have surprised or shocked them with the results? Does that make sense? Um... So I'm guessing that the the images aren't what the bride, I guess it's in preview or afterwards, that... Well, they're not happy with what I've done. <laughs> That's how it's worded, yeah. Any, well, you know, I'm not speaking for you and I'm not speaking for me, but hopefully I've done what, what I already had on the tin, if you know what I mean, when they've come and seen me, and I hope I've delivered what they were expecting from me. But I guess I guess if we do any, I guess the question, let's rephrase it, how... Tip tips for dealing with somebody who isn't quite satisfied, I guess. 
But I'm sure that you satisfy all your clients, Fiona. So. Absolutely, of course I do, every single time. <laughs> um, you, you just have to, um, you just got to apologise and say, I'm sorry that you weren't happy. I think there's usually, you know, I, I think it's quite rare. Hopefully, you know, you are what your package shows. And unless the day's been an absolute disaster, um, I, I think that's what I, I don't think I, I, I'm not saying that we've never experienced it, but it's probably the bride rather than us, if that makes sense. Or, um, or the bride's mother. Or the bride's mother. I think, or the bride's mother. I think sometimes you just have to, this, this is why managing expectation is so important because this is what you want to avoid. You, you want to avoid getting to the point where you've delivered, um, you know, you've worked really hard, you've produced some really nice stuff, you hand the photos over and they go, oh, that's not, we're not happy with that. It's not what we wanted. And I think if, that's, if that happens, then there's been miscommunication from the word go. And, you, and, and whether that's from them or whether that's a misunderstanding on your part, um, that is a breakdown in communication, and that is a very sad day. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Brilliant answer. Uh, what do you do, and I've, we've been here, what do you do when the bride is running late? Stay with her or get the shot on the dress and then head to the church? So part of my, um, part of my morning is that I allocate time for the, bridesmaids, uh, the bride to be, to be ready. So let me answer this question first, okay, uh, in two parts. Um, first, I always recommend to my bride that she is ready for about 30 minutes before I leave to go and meet the groom. So I have to um, ensure that her hair and makeup is um, maybe started first or second in the morning. Maybe second, depends on the number of bridesmaids. So she wants to be ready. She knows that she has this half an hour allocation where we're going to be photographing bridal shots of her with her bridal party, with her parents, before I scoot to the church. So, you know, normally it happens. Normally it's quite good and um, we have that time. Actually, I'm surprised how many brides um, take it on. When I first started to suggest this, um, I don't think I was um, delivering my message quite right. And what would happen, we would be running late. And then, and then the, so the, the sort of stress levels in the morning start to get um, higher and higher and higher. And you need to be in two places at once. And, and the bride knows that you need to go. And it, it starts to cause lots of sort of tensions and everyone's worrying about things. Um, obviously, you just have to get to the church. You just got to leave the bride, you know, in a really nice way. You don't want to cause any stress. You head over to the church and um, you pick up and you stop that section of the day um you know with the bridal sort of morning behind you and then during the um drink reception if you have some time then i would do a portrait shot of her on her own at that point does that make sense have i explained that properly yeah absolutely yeah perfect brilliant um a couple of tacky questions well not tacky questions just what you prefer um when you're shooting um color balance uh, in camera or in post well, that's an interesting one because generally um, I keep everything fairly um, neutral in camera. So I think I've got it set to uh, 5000K um, in the camera. So I normally just keep it like that. And then if I want to warm up the image or change it, I'll do it in post. Sometimes I've actually deliberately put it on the cloudy setting to get that really rich warmth um, coming through in the image. But... Um, it all depends on the day, it depends on the shot, it depends on what mood you're in, what you're wanting to create. Sure, brilliant. Um, obviously, you talked about, we're, we're, we're aware now that obviously a Nikon user, um, what Nikon are you using, love? Um, I'm actually um, I'm actually on D800 still. Oh, okay, that's all right. Um, well, the question itself was, uh, with your Nikon, which ISO are you happy to go up to? Oh, um... I'm happy to go as high as it goes, depending on the situation. If you're in a, a candle lit um, wedding, which I was in the other day, and the light's really low, then I'll just push it all out. Yeah, I'm with you. Brilliant. 
Uh, this was a nice question. So I don't know the answer um, to it. So uh, um, Jonathan's uh, asked that he's about to do his first uh, same-sex wedding, two guys. Any experience with that at all? Not really my clientele, only because I don't ever get asked, actually. But um, I think that um, it's a tricky one because it's not really my. It's not really no, my. Yeah, um, it is. That's yeah. fine. Well, you know, it's just I'm just trying to think how I would pose two guys together. You that's know, what my. That's what I'm thinking about we, right now. We've done it. We've only done one. Um, mm. And we were fortunate enough that the two guys uh, allowed us to film it for the Photographer Academy. So uh, what oh. I will say, Jonathan, is if you haven't uh, seen it already, if you go into the wedding section on the Photographer Academy, um, you'll quite easily find it. Or if you give me an email, drop me an email about support and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, but it was actually, and Mark would, I think he says so on camera in the pre-filming, uh, pre you know, the, the post-filming, um, it was like he was actually not expecting it to be difficult and he found it a lot more difficult than he thought um, mm. because it was actually at, at the beginning hard to make them not look like groomsmen um, yeah. uh, even though they were dressed slightly different of course they're both in suits um, yeah as the day yeah as the day went on but we, that was actually what was important there which you've touched on was the pre was the pre-wedding shoot um, and yeah. That really sort of broke down some barriers with the two guys and made it a little bit more comfortable. And we could re and when yeah. we looked at the pre-wedding shoot, we could see what was working in a, in a couple's poses. So it did. Yeah, it's really it's when you've got like a, a masculine and a feminine um, shape to work together, then it's it's it you know that's it's easy because that's what you're used to. And when, when you're photographing two masculine shapes together, that's quite difficult to. Um, draw the best out of them I can imagine it's quite a challenge I'd be well up for doing it yeah no it was so Jonathan go and check that out if you haven't it's on the on the Academy under the um, under the wedding section or drop me a line if you can't find it but yeah it was uh, and we were and we've we've actually openly marked we wanted to do more just to show people we were also wanted to do it with ladies and uh, but just not had we've, we've not had them come through or come through and agree to let us film it um, but well, my website doesn't really um, speak to that genre of person, so um, it's very rare for me to get those inquiries coming through. Well, I, just, well, I didn't know it, so I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I knew I could answer it, well, well with some guidance anyway, but what you might, you know, you might well have done it. I think with times changing, more and more of it is, is, is happening now as well, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, okay, about let's, let's see where I'm at. Uh, uh, somebody's asked about the timetable, guys. I'm going to share that with you on the Photography Academy Facebook uh, page tomorrow, so we'll put that slide up for you. Still got a lot of questions, and I do want Fiona to ask them for you. I think uh, that really help people to, um, you know, get a, a good idea of how to manage the, the client's wedding day. Absolutely. No, I think uh, that's a brilliant timetable. I loved it. Absolutely great. Do you ever ask the client for um for feedback after the wedding to see how you've done i normally get a really nice email to say thanks photos are really great so um i don't kind of ask for feedback because that is it yeah if they're really happy with their photos and i get a gushing um thank you note then i'm really really happy with that that's fantastic if i don't get a gushing note afterwards then i am a little bit worried that they're not happy so I do drop them a line and I do ask, you know, how are they? You know, I hope you're happy with your photos. Um, and normally it's just because they've been really busy or, you know, life just takes over. Um, but generally everyone is really, really happy. And I am too, which is great. <laughs> What's the kind of time frame uh, for delivery of the wedding package? So once obviously the wedding's done and, um, and you're delivering either the album or the digital, what's the kind of time, usual time frame for you that? I normally say four to six weeks. Yeah, excellent. And it depends on how, um, you know, height of summer, it's probably going to be about six weeks, but at the beginning of the season, four weeks. Yeah, well, uh, well that's a long one. I'll read that in a sec, just in case I get it wrong. Um, uh, there's a few techie ones again. Um, are you metering through camera and are you shooting in RAW? Okay, well, I'm not the most technical wedding photographer, so um, I kind of just keep things really simple. Um, and I'm really all about 
the composition of the shot. So I'm metering camera, I'll definitely shoot on raw. Perfect. Excellent. There you go. You've answered that. That was not. <laughs> <laughs> um, your usual uh, choice of ISO uh, if the weather's good. Well, if the weather's going to be good, then you're going to be all right, aren't you? So, I would, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, bright sunshine, you're going to be shooting about 200, 400. I want to underexpose because I want to bring the detail out of the wedding dress. Absolutely, yeah. So I can enhance it. You You've just yeah. kind of prompted your next question. Top tip oh, yeah. for photographing the details in the wedding dress. Yeah, <laughs> there you are then. So I underexpose to draw out the texture of the lace. Brilliant. Um, where is it? Uh, shutter priority or aperture priority? I shoot in manual. I used to shoot in aperture priority, um, which was fine and it worked really well for me. And that was um, great, you know, that was fine. But now I'm shooting in manual because I find that I can actually control what I want out of the image. For example, if I wanted to underexpose to draw out the lace in the dress, I wouldn't be able to do that shooting aperture priority. Yeah, I'm really brilliant. We're getting there, just a few left, so uh, yeah. we're getting there. Um, what do you do if your bride or groom tried to, oh yeah, this is quite a good one actually, so we'll see, we'll see where you get, okay. So what, so what do you do if your bride and groom try to add you to your personal Facebook page and not your business page, but you don't want to add them? I wouldn't want to add my bride and groom. No, to your personal Facebook page, not your business one, your personal one. They're trying to friend you on your personal Facebook page, or do you not? Uh, yes, yeah, all right, is it? Yeah. Um, I don't, I, it's different, I think. Oh, yeah. Terrible. <laughs> For good reason. Um, it's 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 an odd one for us. Um, it would be it's different for the Photography Academy because we're a different entity now. Uh, yeah. Obviously, um, you know, we, we we'll invite them and let them in to join. Uh, I, I get this actually. We get this. We get this a lot with our uh, business mentoring group. So where this and this question actually comes up a lot. And I basically kind of say that obviously if you have a business page then I don't think there's any harm in you asking them just politely to say well look you know I like to keep the business within business but I kind of almost also say that if you're in business and you're working for yourself your Facebook doesn't kind of become your own anymore um, and so I would kind of treat my personal page kind of like my work page as well and I even have some photography friends who have that were exactly that position where yeah. they've also got not it's not private but they've got a secondary facebook personal one that you know it has a slightly different name in the change or a nickname or something like that and and yeah. you just keep that for your, your absolute personal uh well, you know, my life's pretty dull so <laughs> got anything exciting to post up there i'm afraid so yeah i mean for me for facebook it's just become a work thing so you know people find my personal one it's fine because i'm i'm you know i'm very rarely uh posting much or i've just written about the latest film that i've enjoyed or you know a decent exactly. meal that i've had so exactly. i'm not particularly bothered but no, uh, but if you are bothered about it i don't think there's anything wrong in you asking them just to like your business your business page to be honest I think with the business page as well, we can't tag them, I don't think. Uh, yeah, you can, but it's not as easy. Um, and they kind of have to like your personal page. So in that respect, I would almost set up my, a personal page as my business page. And you're right on that. That's a really good point, Fiona, to be honest. So I would kind of have a secret personal business, uh, Facebook page. That's my advice. I yeah, I think, you know, I think you just got to be careful about Facebook. And, you know, it's about having a reputation and what do you we have to be seen as humans we are humans and so obviously it's nice to put some things up there which interest you and you know you're having fun with your friends and everything but i mean this goes across the board doesn't it you just need to be careful about what you're putting up there absolutely yeah absolutely uh do you do you recommend referral schemes to family and friends of your couples Referral schemes, what as in sort of you People can have... I guess your, your bride and groom's referring and, and recommending you. If, do you have anything like that in place? or? Um, I don't have schemes in place, um, but um, I do get recommendations. I'm photographing. Um, I've got a meeting with a, a bride tomorrow whose sister I photographed two years ago. 
so I'm, I'm normally photographing siblings um, um, but I don't have a feral set up really in place uh, I've got to ask quickly uh, Fiona uh, is your husband's first name Paul by any chance yes because he's just asked you to share your personal Facebook page <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, you would... yeah, but talk to your wife, Paul. Talk to your wife on that one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, his, his surname kind of gave it away, so it was. Oh, yeah, but, yeah well, if it was Paul Elizabeth, you might have got that one through. To be fair, but yeah, but he didn't. yeah. We are getting, we are getting there, Fiona. Um, this is quite <laughs> nice, and I do have an answer for it. Top tips for photographing the larger actual bride or possibly larger groom. Um, so um, I have done this on a couple of occasions and what I would normally, I'm just trying to remember what I've done in the past, so um, I've actually, what have I done in the past, she was quite large, I normally get them to sit down and look up to camera and so I'm shooting down onto them for a nice bridal portrait if I'm photographing her individually. And then I can crop in on her face and do something quite interesting that way. Um, if they are um, together and, you know, normally I try and get them to stand at 45 degree angle just to um, see their shape coming through. If they're really busty and they've got really big hips, then embrace it and just get some nice curves running through their body. Oh, brilliant tips there. Um, I'll jump in with that as well, guys. You know, we've talked about the Photographer Academy, so I'll use a soft plug. There's a film on there called The Big and Beautiful Bride, which is exactly uh, the one you want to go and check out. Because um, uh, she was big and beautiful, and, and we had some amazing pictures. And uh, typically, her husband, uh, very tall and skinny. So it was a real challenge for Mark, um, but there's some stunning images there. So if you search on Big and Beautiful Bride, uh, you'll find that. And again, if you can't find it, uh, drop me an email, and I'll find that for you. Uh, Fiona, we have, we have, I was going to say we have one left. All right. Okay, Although, yeah. Well, actually, no, we had one left. One's chipped in, but I've kind of just answered it. What about big height differences between the bride and groom? That's a, an interesting one as well. And I would tend to, um, again, I would use, I'll try and find a location that would help you to balance that shot out a little bit. You know, maybe um, shooting on steps. I don't know, so the groom could actually uh, sit down and maybe have the bride sort of s sat slightly behind and lean in on the shoulder. You, it's just about um, experience with those sort of things, I think. Oh, absolutely. And that's when the pre shoots really good because leading up to the wedding, then you can kind of think, oh, right, okay, well, this is going to be tricky on the day. And so you can actually plan a couple of shots um and um have that ready with you so on the day you can just remind yourself of what you're doing well somebody's going to have that challenge next year because i'm six foot and mel isn't so uh yeah they'll be uh thanks for your wedding jay <laughs> you, well you're welcome to come and have a go they'll be yeah there's a challenge for you there's a challenge you've already said this evening that it's all about meeting the client's expectations we don't have it <laughs> So you, well, I'll, I'll be delighted. <laughs> we will definitely talk. We will definitely talk. Uh, brilliant. Uh, okay, so that was the last but one, but there is one more. Uh -huh. um, how do the client? I presume oh, I, I, I presume I know the answer to this, but I'll ask you: uh, Are the clients seeing the edited images? Um, are they? No, not really. They don't need to. They can if they want to. Um, there's no reason they can, but there's no reason for them to. And actually, I try to, I know I say that I underexpose, and I do quite a lot, but um, that's for a specific reason. So that's normally just during, um, you know, the portraits. Um, other than that, I try to get everything right in camera, so I don't have a lot of work to do post-end. But they're welcome to see, you know, even if I, even if I shoot really dark and I can light it later, if they want to see it, they can see it. I've got nothing to hide. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, we've had a couple slip through, but I will ask guys, because we've run over quite a bit, that these will be the last few questions now. Uh, and I know for a fact, well, I'm, I hopefully uh, Fiona will be more than happy to come back and do a few more of these for us as well. Uh, in the yeah. Next. 
We've also talked about getting you down to do some interviews about wedding photography, so that'll be uh, we're definitely going to make that happen uh, in the next uh, brilliant time as well. Um, let me just so last last one then. Um, how many what? How many gigabytes of cards are you taking out with you on a shoot, love? So you know what's your average sort of? What do you think? I I have um, three thirty two gigs cards uh, cards, so I shoot on those. So I shoot anywhere between, depending on the wedding, it can be anywhere between 1,900 and 2,050, depending. Brilliant. Excellent. And, oh, I missed this one earlier, so I do apologise, Anna, so I will ask it before we go. Um, I don't know if we've actually talked about it, because I know what you, I know the type of photography that you do, but what, do, you do, the, do, do you do the candid, more documentary stuff during the receptions and things like that as well, Fiona? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. So I can just um, go back actually to these, this shot here, which is one of my favourite candid shots I took um, in February. So top top tips for that. What type of lens would you be looking for? You know, you just you, you, I presume backed off with a zoom, is it? Yeah, I think I shot that on twenty four seventy. Um, so this is after the group shots and the portrait shots have all done. You know, we go back into the drinks reception and then I quickly walk around the room looking for some nice documentary images that um, people are going to love looking, real storytelling stuff. And that's the stuff, as you know, because we've discussed about it yesterday, but that's my idea of photography. That's what I would want recorded on my day more than anything. I would want that. Obviously, it's still me and Mel in some of the shots, but the documentary yeah. part is to me, I, I'd want to... Uh, the things that I haven't been able to see that you've been able to yeah. see because obviously I'm tied up doing other things. And, and yeah. That, that, that. This is a great way as well to actually sort of take a break from, you know, so it's just after the group shots and the portrait shots. So normally, you know, everyone's kind of like buzzing a little bit. So this is kind of nice just to walk around a room and, and uh, take a moment to have a bit of a break, actually. But always looking for interesting, interesting shots. This is my favourite one so far this year absolutely brilliant uh, and that is us for tonight fiona so wonderful absolutely fantastic thank you so much